Hello, everybody. Happy Monday, May 30th. Uh, special happy birthday to my youngest niece who turned one yesterday on May 29th. She is just the most delightful little baby. She's the youngest of three. Bless her heart. Um, and she definitely is out of this world, isn't she, Stephanie? She does not look like a, she looks like a little mm -hmm. alien baby, doesn't she? She's beautiful. So happy birthday mm -hmm. to my niece, May. I love you very, very much. I'm so excited that you're a Barbie girl. Mm -hmm. You, your, your older sister, Jacqueline, wasn't much of a Barbie girl, but you are turning into a Barbie girl and your aunt Bryce was definitely a Barbie girl. So I had so much fun buying you Barbies. So, um, I'm, I'm just so happy you're here with us, May, on this journey. And I cannot wait to see you grow up and become a beautiful, powerful, sovereign young lady. All right, Stephanie, how are you? I'm good. I just took a little trip up to New Hampshire and back to go, uh, visit somebody that, um, is in one of my groups. So that was exciting. And, um, yeah. So anyways, I'm doing great. I'm a little tired, but yeah. And I was into Legos as a child, not Barbie. Well, I did have Barbies, but I was heavily into Legos. My nephew loves Legos. My nephew. And they, they were the pink Legos though. Like the little girly Legos, you know, with the, I, Oh, that's the set I had. I had a, um, a Lego Island with a palm tree. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. Of course I did. <laughs> No, my nephew, Charlie, loved Legos. And I'll tell you guys a sweet story. After my first and second trip to India, there was like a few months where I was home for like two months before I had headed back. And I just opened up my foundation where we were trying to help some of the slum kids and all this kind of stuff. And I was at my sister's house. And I was actually asking her for clothes, for old clothes um, from my niece and nephew that I could take back with me to give to the kids in the slums. And Charlie was asking questions. He was really little at this time. Um, he was probably like four, maybe. And he was asking all these questions. And I was explaining to Charlie that these kids like don't have anything. He was like, they don't have Legos. And I was like, no, they don't have Legos. So he runs upstairs and I don't know what he's doing. But then all of a sudden he comes back down with a baggie full of Legos and gives them to me to bring Aww. to India, to give to the kids in India. So that just goes, he was like four at the time. That just goes to show you guys, you don't need religion to teach you right from wrong. That's already in you. You know, he That's didn't so need cute. So cute. He gave up his own Legos because he felt so horrible that there were kids in another country that did not have Legos. So um, we are born with that, that longing to help people and to love people. And so that just is it, it again, you don't need religion to teach you right from wrong. You're born with your own moral compass to understand and have empathy towards other people. So, but before we get started, I'm going to do what I've been doing. And that is I'm going to cleanse the space. Um, I am disabling the comments for a while, which I really don't like doing because I really like hearing y'all's feedback. Cause I feel like we are in this together, all of us, you know, Stephanie and I are not experts. We're just researching and bringing information forward so that we can all figure it out yes. together. We're all walking each other home. But unfortunately, the mind control of a lot of these uh, cabal organizations, including the Christian church, is very, very strong. And some of the comments have gotten extremely abusive and extremely violent coming from Christians. Uh, not just towards me, but towards a lot of the viewers as well. And so for now, we're just going to disable the comments until things get a little bit calmer. It's not going to stop us from bringing forth the truth. I know that's what they want to do is to stop us from speaking the truth. Thank you guys for understanding. Um, we're just going to keep pushing forward. All right. So I'm going to ask that the space be cleansed. Uh, if you are sitting at home right now and want your computer cleansed as well, just say that you consent to this cleansing. If you don't want your space cleansed, it's totally fine. But I'm going to ask that Michael and Gabriel, Magdalene and Yashua and any of our guides that are here for our highest good be present right now. Help us to deliver information that's for the highest good of humanity. I ask especially my grandfather, uh, Ed Watson, who passed away a few years ago, who has come forth in a lot of readings. I know I understand that you are very much a part of this on the other side of the veil. God bless you. You are like six point six foot five. So I imagine even on the other side of the bell, you're quite a force to be reckoned with. So I'm going to ask for my granddad to come in and help me as well. Get the message out that needs to be out. Um, any demonic entities that are present in this space that have been tethered to us or to anybody else through black magic and witchcraft. I'm here to remind you 
We now know that the third of heaven that fell with Lucifer did not fall by choice, but were taken captive by Lucifer. And so I'm going to remind you that you can go back into the light. You are not tethered to these black witches permanently. Even though you've been mind controlled over these years to think that you are, you have to do this. You don't have to do this. You are free to walk into the light. And Magdalene is telling me to tell you that if any demon right now, anywhere that wants to go back into the light, but needs help, she will help you. She will hold your hand. So will Michael, mm -hmm. where you can receive the healing that you need because you too have been abused and you too have been totally, totally stripped of your sovereignty mm -hmm. and the light will take you back and will bring you back to that healing. So please know that you can go with that being said for those entities that are still wish to do us harm who still wish to ignore the law of consent and free will. I'm going to do some dragon's blood just to protect the space. That's what I did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to kind of boggle some people's minds, but yeah, the demons were not 100%. Like they didn't decide to just join Lucifer leave. They actually were removed forcefully by Lucifer. We're finding out. So they, they can go back to the lake. They do have consent and they were, they were almost on Kaeltra themselves. So they have to just be reminded. And these, we know this through the grimoires that we're studying too, which is why I might, we, why another reason why we might be getting even more assaults on our channel is because we're talking about the grimoires that were hidden. The grimoires say this as well, that these demons, so the humans that are practicing black magic um they are summoning these demons so not only is are these demons now tethered to lucifer against their choice but they're now tethered to these black witches too and they're being forced to do things that they don't want to do um and this is coming through in a lot of channeling right right now as well and um i had discovered a little bit about this in my 20s i'm not going to get into it but something happened where it hit me that they could also return back into life i won't get into that story right now um maybe that's for another day but um, but I'm going to remind again, all the demons out there that have been cast down with Lucifer that didn't do it by choice. You have been brainwashed and, and t almost like Stockholm syndrome to think you have to do this. You don't have to do this. You can go back into the light and Magdalene, Michael, all of them will help you get into the light where you will be healed and you will be restored. OK, the same healing that's coming for us as humans is also available to you as a quote unquote demon too. And you can be restored to your angelic glory. And so if that's something you want to do, you just say, help me. Just ask for Magdalene, for Michael, for Yahshua, for any of them to come help you get into the light and they will. Okay. Because love is universal. We're all here to love. Okay. All right. So today on Monday Mystery Guys, we are going to be talking about the Merovingians. And this is something that Magdalene pushed me to look into. And I didn't know why until then I started researching them. And I was like, oh, I see. I see. Um, now, this video is being released at 8 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. That is because at 10 o'clock this morning, both Stephanie and I will be back on Aquarius Rising Africa. I'm there every, every Monday where we're going to be having a live discussion about this with Shanti and Mornay. Now, because it's live, that's Eastern time. So 10 o'clock AM Eastern time in the United States, that's New York city's time. So whatever time that is for you, just look on your world clock. You can join us live and you can contribute to the conversation. And so I always release my episode two hours ahead of time to give you guys time to watch it. So if you want to contribute to the conversation, you've already kind of have some, some stuff to go off of. And so um, I told Stephanie, when we started, when I started looking into the Merovingians, I told you not to research anything, didn't I? I said, don't look, I'll, I'll just, um, I'll do it myself. And I'm going to ask you some questions. Now I had been familiar. Have you heard of the Merovingians, Stephanie? Not until you said something probably maybe years ago, but I don't. Yeah. I didn't recall. So the Merovingians are a dynastic family allegedly from France. Okay. Um, now we studied them in school. But um, the information that, I mean, guys, if you guys haven't figured out that universities, colleges, high schools, middle schools, elementary schools are all black magic spell casting, then I don't know what to tell you. All right. We know that all of our educational system is basically bunk. We know that history is, is a, what is it? Napoleon said, I have that quote here. So Napoleon said, history is a set of lies agreed upon. 
But because of these dark players, they have to tell you a little bit of the truth within the fictional story. And so when I started looking back into the Merovingians, I already knew they were a French dynastic family. I knew that they had like mystical powers, um, but that's about it. Uh, I went back and I looked at some of the standard academic stuff. And then I was like, nah, we're going to, we're going to walk away from this. And then Maggie Magdalene led me where I needed to go. So what do they tell us about the Merovingians? So what we are told in school is that they were a ruling family of the Franks from the middle of the fifth century till about 751. Um, they were the king of the Franks of Gaul, okay, derives from King Merovich, who was a great ruler. Now, unlike other ruling families, they did not view themselves as sacred or as gods. This is important, guys, and this is coming from the academic world, too. So a lot of these ruling families, the English royal family, well, they're all related, the Bourbons, um, all of them all believe that they are divine blood line. Um, there's many, many King James quotes where he calls himself a god. For those who a god, for those who still think the King James Bible is good, um, they believe that they're actually gods. The Merovingians did not see themselves as sacred. They saw themselves as one with everybody else. Um, they were known to wear their hair long. We know that spiritually on a lot of these back channels for channeling uh, extraterrestrials, that there is a lot of spirituality in our hair. Our hair is our antenna. Um, there's a story from the uh, Kiwis down in New Zealand that when they were forced to cut their hair off, they lost their ability to navigate the ocean. Okay, so hair is super, super sacred. I don't think we even fully understand the complexity of our hair. Okay. All right, but they were they would not cut their hair. They also taught people that Yahshua was not crucified. They taught people that he was not mic drop crucified. Stephanie, do we believe yeah. Yahshua was crucified? Mithra, yes. <clears throat> Guys, my voice, by the way, is raspy today. My throat chakra is healing from something. So if I get really raspy, I do apologize. Um Mithra was crucified. Mithra equals Jesus. Now there's Yahshua and Joseph. That's the real Christ. teacher that came in, the real Christ that came in. He was not. No. Why was he not? Why, why is that not a thing? Because he wasn't part of the Jewish line. He wasn't say that's the satanic it's ritual. It's the Antichrist, right? The Mithra Jesus story is the Antichrist. Yeah, because source creator does not require human sacrifice. Source creator does not require blood rituals. Who requires blood rituals? Lucifer. Okay, so the name Merovingian, get this guys, means the bloodline of Magdalene. Again, mic drop. <laughs> now, Stephanie and I have said multiple times, and I have said this, I have been on a quest to get the full, I want to know the full definition of Magdalene. I want to know why her name was Magdalene. I want to know the full definition. And we're starting to slowly under it because it's the, it's the bloodline of Magdalene, even though they were the descendants of both Yahshua and Magdalene, because Magdalene and Yasha had what, five children? They're the Something bloodline, like the, the, the descendants of both of them through one of their children. Um, it's called Magdalene's bloodline. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Cause I have a feeling I know what this was is this is referring to, I know Stephanie, you kind of, we kind of talked about it, but let's go a little bit deeper now with what we have found. So I want you guys to remember that they apparently ruled from the fifth century until 751. This in our history books in the black magic spell casting that's done in our schools is considered to be what we call the dark ages. They put the dark ages into our timeline because what were the dark ages? Tartaria. Ding, 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 ding. Which was not a dark age at all. No, they just pulled it dark because they didn't want us to know that there was the thousand years of peace. So that's interesting. They have them living in the dark ages. Now get this, okay? So they, <clears throat> the, um, Merovingians had a uh, a symbol 
when we all, you know, a lot of families have crest and stuff. Theirs was a bee. And you can see these cicadas are the golden bees on a lot of their tombs. So supposed tombs, I think that some bodies have been moved, which we're going to get to, um, saying that this is where this was their family emblem. Now, cicadas are huge down here in Georgia. Actually, you could hear them all the time. They actually make my stomach turn because usually it's really fucking hot outside when the cicadas are going. So I usually like that sense of memory. I'm like, oh God, it's so hot. So, but the cicadas were big in Egyptian culture. Okay. So they symbolized immortality and resurrection in Egypt, which is coming from the priestesshood of Isis and Osiris. Can I interject for two seconds? Yeah. Fun fact about bees. We're talking about bees for a second. Beekeepers normally live the longest because bees' vibrational frequency is so high that when you're around them, they heal you. Wow. Okay, that's big. I didn't know that. So that's yep. huge. I just found that out. So Napoleon, regardless of whether Napoleon really lived or not, which now I'm starting to question a lot of these historical figures, he had the bee sewn onto a lot of his regalia because of course the house of bourbon which was the bad line the pesor line today at the top tippy top of the pyramid were challenging napoleon but he put the bees on his his regalia because he was pulling from the merovingians the magdalene bloodline okay so we have been told that the um the holy grail is a chalice that yashua drank from at the last supper well, I'm going to insert a picture here in the editing process to show you all the different chalices that were they drank from in the Last Supper, which all spell out to Yahweh. Well, who again is Yahweh? Lucifer. Lucifer. Paul. Yahweh. Okay. So right there, they're showing you that Passover is a blood ritual, some uh, immortalizing a blood ritual to Lucifer. Now, again, this is not, we love our Jewish friends. All of our religions have been completely just ripped apart and inverted. So please, please understand that. Okay. We're just trying to get to the truth. Okay. Because the truth is that we're all each other's brothers and sisters. Okay. They're the ones that decided to divide us, not us. We never want to divide ourselves. Now, chalice is a Mesopotamian word that means nectar of supreme excellence. Or the ankh, or the womb. So the ankh, and I'm going to also insert a picture here, is the womb of a woman. Bryce, if you want to um, link down below the video I did on the ankh, so people have more information on that, I will send you the link to that. Perfect. I will do that. And I know in Aquarius Rising Africa, you in this later this morning will probably speak a little bit more on the ankh too. But I want you guys, everybody thinks this is so satanic. This is the womb of the woman that carries the nectar of supreme excellence. The Merovingian is the Magdalene bloodline, the Holy Grail. All right. Let's pause for a second on that because I have even more stuff I want to talk about. But let's just pause there. And let's, let's ask Spirit some questions. Okay. Let's ask. We are pretty certain that Magdalene's blood type was O negative. Can we check with the cards if Magdalene was O negative? If they'll give us a definitive answer on that, just so we can start off in that place. Right off the bat of knees. First card. Now, if you, and then I got the judgment card, so it was trying to be manipulated. We're gonna, yeah, okay. So O negative. I'm an O negative blood blood type. So what does that mean? I got a ton of videos on the bloodlines, guy. This is all about bloodlines. Okay, what does that mean? That means that I don't have an O negative. Does not have any of the A or B antigens, nor does it have the rhesus factor. Okay, Stephanie is also rhesus negative. She's A B negative. So the A antigen is type one human. The B antigen is type two human. Okay. Now O negative can host all of the 
antigens, but it doesn't have the antigens. So for example, if I were to have a baby with someone who is a negative, another, another rhesus negative, but without my baby could host the a antigen if my body allowed it to. Okay. Now I'm not saying this in any way, but if you look at different graphs, they will show you that the O negative is the pure bloodline of the gods, lowercase g. So my question for the cards is, was O negative the bloodline of the Atlanteans? Okay. O negatives are also, and this is not, this is just generally speaking, guys. There are lots of people who are O positive or AB positive or whatever that have a lot of psychic abilities, but O negatives tend to be the most, generally speaking, attuned to uh, psychic abilities, um, mysticism. Right off the bat, Nice. Yeah. So then we know the Atlanteans were magical people, right? They were magical people. So that was their blood type was O negative. Um, we know that... Uh, we know that the, the Noah's Ark story is the story of the fall of Atlantis with the flooding. Now, Noah was not the only person to survive. There were many, many, many people who survived. Um, a lot of people sought high ground in the Pyrenees Mountains. That's why the Pyrenees Mountains, uh, the mountain chain between Spain and France, has a high concentration of O-negative blood. Uh, also, the Mayans have a high concentration of O-negative blood. Um, so we know there are lots of people who actually survived it. However, for Magdalene, she carried forth because she was coming from the priestess and priesthood of Isis, which what, can we just verify was the priestess and priesthood of Isis kind of the dominating spiritual. I don't want to say it wasn't a religion, guys. It was a spiritual understanding. Was that coming from from Atlantis? Isis part of Atlantis. Or even okay. before Atlantis. Is that what the Atlantis? I think it was before Atlantis. I think Atlantis? it was even before Lemuria. Yeah, but were the Atlanteans in that understanding okay. of Isis and Osiris? I mean, I have the chariot card, which is Egyptian on this, which could indicate that. But if I was reading the cards as standard tarot, Atlanteans, uh, there's a big mod podge of different st things, but the biggest thing that held up Atlantis had to do with twins. So, okay. well, so we know that Magdalene's parents were twin flames. We know that Yahshua's parents were twin flames. So they were coming through a line of that vibrational frequency, correct? Yeah. And that's what they wanted to destroy. Okay. So Which, that was next to it. And then New Journey. Then they quickly did something, uh, quickly fled. But it, it doesn't answer the question about ISIS, though. That's, that's the thing. Now, ISIS and Osiris were twin flames. Mm -hmm. Something to do with that. I mean, if you could look at it this way, Lyran too, not only is it Egyptian, but you have these two, like almost like Lyran. Well, yeah, Lyran. Yeah. So okay. So let's, let's ask this. Is it because Magdalene and Yahshua, not only did they carry, not only did Magdalene carry the, the Atlantean bloodline, but they were also coming through the Lyran galactic tribe. From which, what I've researched, Bryce, Lyrans actually were the key to, I believe, Lemuria and Atlantis. Because their planet was destroyed, from my understanding and my research, they were trying to make Earth another Lyra. Mm -hmm. And then the re reptilians came in, split the twin flames apart, lowered the vibrational frequency of Earth, which went from a 4D to a 3D, because we were, we were ascended at one point, and it lowered that frequency into a duality. And then the firmament went up, and that's just what I'm understanding, but I, I can ask the cards and see what I get here. Um, I have a question too that I don't know. I'll let you ask the, the cards first though. How do you want me to wear this again? Was it because they were uh, Lyran as well? So Lyran is the carrier of the Christ conscious. We know that we've talked about that many times. Lyra, the Lyrans carry the Christ consciousness. So I'm going to go with yes and no. So I get this 
four of wands with the star card. So that's telling me that it was full of off worlders. I kind of almost answer the question as yes, it is Lyran's. Um, but I actually think it was just, it's a lot of ascended masters with mm -hmm. that Hierophant card because it's, it's positively aspected with the Queen of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to say it was probably a hodgepodge um, of um, all the ascended masters reincarnated or actually the ascended masters, um, which I believe is actually the same right now to bring Earth back to its original state, to be honest with you. That's just my personal opinion. I won't go into that deeply, but um, take what resonates. But um, I'm gonna get. I'm, I'm getting a yes and a no. I believe that all the like, I believe it was dominated by Lyrans. Mm -hmm. But I want to say it's it was kind of like a um, what melting pot. Yeah, of all type of different types of off worlders as well. Well, that makes sense too. I'm going to get to it as well. Okay, so let's go into. Um, let's just ask: Is the onk the womb? Okay. which goes more into you know it's more than just the womb is more than just a um a place for a baby to grow if we look at the sex magic of isis the positive the vibration of an orgasm basically um it happens in the womb right so there's magic there as far as like higher vibrance higher uh, frequency vibration which is what a lot of, I believe a lot of these solar flares coming up are going to be an actual intimacy between twin flames. You're the queen of pentacles. I have no aces in the spread. I pulled a few cards here, um, but the queen of pentacles, it's um, pentacles are earth. And The answer is I'm getting yes in the cards. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. Number one, this is a victory card. So that's kind of like saying there's victory behind the actual question. Um, and then I get the moon card, which can be fertility, by the way. Because uh, moon is female energy. And then we have a death card, which is also a rebirth card. So fertility oh, wow. yeah, and cool. and and. Rebirth, okay? Which I'm also getting to these two cards together is kind of like a, a an organic portal, meaning the, the womb is a portal. Um, and also, too, I also have the Queen of Swords. So I have these two queens right here. So that's a lot of female energy right there. And it's almost like this is going from the spirit realm suddenly going into the womb, like the portal of the womb is what I'm picking up on. So to look at kind of the symbology behind the cards and a little bit of what the cards actually mean, especially with that moon card, I'm going to go with, it's one of the meanings okay. of the onk. It's probably the originality of where the shape of it mm -hmm. came from. There's several meanings behind the onk, but the fertility part, the, the uterus and the, uh, the whole uh, female organ uh, shape uh, in my personal opinion, I feel like that's where it originated from. Yeah. So let's ask then this then, um, is the Holy Grail the bloodline of Atlantis that was carried forth through Magdalene? And I'm going to ask this because I'm going to, I'm going to, Stephanie, I spoke about this off camera. The O negative bloodline is the bloodline that the Royal family loves. They love the O negative bloodline and it's because the O negative bloodline, as I said, and this is not, again, if you're O positive, A positive, B positive, AB positive, I'm not saying anything. You could very well have very psych high psychic abilities, but as a whole, generally speaking, O negatives are known to be very psychic and to be very mystical and to, to have they're just antennas. O negatives are antennas. I can testify that with my life. I've always been antennas for the spirit world. Okay. Um, and they want to be able to manipulate that, that, that pure blood without any antigens in for their bidding, right? Because both the bad and the good side are using the same tools in this war, right? With divination. So they want to be able to manip manipulate that O negative bloodline. Um, 
And so I think that the uh, powers that be tried to infiltrate the Magdalene bloodline to take over the Holy Grail of the Atlantean bloodline, which then obviously goes back to Lumeria, which keeps going back further and further and further. Figuring out how to word this. I know the answer to it, but just figuring out how to word it. So... I'm going to go with I could take this a couple different ways. I could take it as a female with O negative. And look at that. The Anka's right there. So, or Magdalene herself. It would be one of the two. It would, be, it would either be woman with that particular blood type. I'm actually going to go with that over just her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it, it was she just carried it, guys. The o negative bloodline was the Atlantean bloodline. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, they were, they've been trying to steal it, which by the way, I was getting anyways. I was, I told Bryce, I text Bryce that, well, two days ago I said, I just had a download. That's why all the royal families wanted the O negative because they were trying to hijack and steal the Holy that's Grail. That, that's what this is, stealing. To, to bring in the, their own NWO future. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, however, <coughs> not going to work. Karma, justice, karmatically, it doesn't belong to them. Yeah. It belongs to the Atlanteans, the lineage of the Atlanteans, right? Mm -hmm. And and I just had a download just now. I and I could be wrong on this, okay? So I feel like Yashua's bloodline, the A B negative, which I divinated because we know the shroud of turn is fake. Mm -hmm. I asked if AB negative was his blood type and I got yes. And it kind of makes sense because it's all the blood types all in one when they come together. Okay. Magdalene so could host it through her O negative. Exactly. So um, this is a download I just got. And I actually got this yesterday too, but I'm, I'm getting more information in my head about it. I feel like uh, Magdalene was like that Atlantean lineage. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, that Yashua's blood type was more of the Isis lineage. I feel like they they were the same, but they were separate at the same time. Does that make any sense? Yeah, they were po they were powerful together because Isis reincarnated into Mother Mary, mm -hmm. Osiris incarnated into Joseph, and then the first book of the Bible starts off at Genesis, which is the genetics of Isis. Yeah, but they that took out anything Magdalene. So they took out that Atlantean uh, lineage. Well, I'm going to get into that because the Cassiopeians have spoken about this. And so, oh, but okay. let me, um, let me ask, and let's just verify. Have we asked just to verify? I don't know if I asked this in the beginning, correct me if I have, that the Merovingians are the descendants of oh, Yashua. Merovingians? The Merovingians. Okay. The dynasty of rulers. For the long okay. hair from the dark ages that would have been tartaria that did not see themselves i mean can you imagine that like you've got these rulers these rulers that didn't see themselves as any better than anybody else like what a peaceful world we would live in <laughs> like leaders actually saw themselves yeah. as being equal and merovingian again means the bloodline of magdalene so my next question is going to be where they owe negative the Merovingians. Mm -hmm. Since oh, did, what, what question did you want me to ask? Because I was asking. To verify that they were the descendants of Yahshua. Okay. Magdalene very much understood that Yahshua was never crucified, that he lived a very long life with Magdalene and their five children. They did have to flee, though, which we're going to get into. Yeah. So I got an ace that just popped out at me. In addition, I have the star and the lovers card. Yeah, they were the descendants. So let's ask, since they since they had the Merovingian, since they were the bloodline of Magdalene, 
were they O negative? And remember, guys, in Tartaria and these other empires, they knew more than we did. I mean, we think about the past as being so like Neanderthal-like, but no, they actually were way more technologically advanced than we were. And that makes sense if they are because they understood the value of hair and this, the spiritual side effects of hair that we're just now trying to figure out what all that means. And so for a uh, O negative woman, so I'm O negative. Let me just explain this for, uh, if I were to have a baby with somebody who is A negative, B negative, AB negative, whatever, it would be up to the father as whether or not he could pass his antigens down or not. So that, so a, a child could inherit O negative from their mother if the father's antigens were not able to be passed down through the mother, but it could work out a different child could be AB negative and another child could be O negative depending on the father's DNA. Okay, so I have a couple things going on here. I'm getting, so I do have the four of wands, which is celebration and happiness and twin flame card, okay? The sun, I feel like, is saying yes to the question because the sun almost acts like an ace in the tarot deck. Mm -hmm. I will and say this, though, too. my cards are also telling me it was being hijacked. So I have the ten of wands, which is burden, with the five of pentacles, temporary, um, painful setbacks and such. So I'm, I'm getting um, that it was hijacked. It was so that, that, was my next, that was my next question at the well, month. That, that answered it. Did the royal family come in and mess with the Merovingians and take them and take the bloodline? Yeah. So I can ask you want me to ask that directly then, even though I got that? Okay. Yeah. This, were, the were the Merovingian right. bloodline hijacked right. by the... Um, dark controllers after the mud flood to be able to use their mystical abilities from um the chalice which is this the nectar of supreme excellence that was the uh, atlantean bloodline that they were obviously very well aware of in tartaria mm -hmm. I only had to pull two cards, an ace with a five of pentacles. So that's a setback. Yeah, absolutely they did. Okay. And that's a wand. So it's like they used spell casting, right? With, yeah. You know, a wand. So I'm going to go ahead and say this because most people who've been on my channel for a while know this. I am related to the royal family. My great, great, great grandfather was born into the royal family. He fled. Just because someone's born into an evil family doesn't mean they're evil. He wasn't evil. He fled. Uh, his daughter, he sent to Philadelphia in, in, um, to hide her. Guess where I get my own negative bloodline from? The royal family. Guess where that... So, and I feel safe asking this, Stephanie. Um, is my blood, is my lineage Merovingian? Through my blood type. I feel safe asking this because everybody already knows that, I'm, that I get it through the royal family. Because okay. I'm going to ask that about collectively as well with other... Just collectively, are there a lot of truthers that are of the... Merovingian blood. They don't even might not even know it. I have a strange feeling. Okay. Is Bryce Merovingian? Am I Merovingian? I think I know the answer to this, but we'll, we'll verify it through the cards. Freaking cards. Sometimes I get these answers that I'm just like, what? What side do you, what side of the family do you get it from? My mom, mom or dad. Okay. So that doesn't fit. I have one card that would explain that you are, and that's the strength card, but it's not because it says strength. It's because of the lion. And the girl, look at the, what, what color hair did the girl's Nordic looking, isn't she? Yeah. We're going to get into that. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll explain why after. Like, okay. Why? Okay. We can just leave it That's here. the only card that is showing that you yeah. would be. Unless you want me to continue to pull more cards or ask again. No, I mean, there's stuff you don't want to talk about because I, I, I know, I, I think that's, I think there's some stuff there that probably we shouldn't get into because. 
Let's just mm -hmm. ask now collectively, are there a lot of people in the truth or community, the 10% of the truth community that's good, that are actually of Merovingian descent, but they don't know it yet? Again, my cards aren't giving me a definitive answer, but I'm going to go with a yes on this. And for the I would say not all of them, but some. Um, <coughs> and they don't and hear Number one, I had the Ten of Pentacles, so that's family. So that's saying like part of the Merovingian family, right? Yeah, yep, a lineage. But the, the, how do I say this? I feel like those that are of this descent are more susceptible, not only to being more psychic potentially, like, and I'm very psychic guys. I'm not O negative. I may be negative. So but I think I'm, you're Merovingian I, too. Okay. So I thought you were talking about like specifically. O no, I'm not talking about specific. I know O negative specifically is Magdalene, but I think that there's a lineage here and people don't even know it. Okay. So, yeah. And I feel like a lot of this is battle of the bloodlines. I mean, I felt like this for a couple of months now, knowing what I know now. Um, those who are on the side of good that are of this Merovingian family, not, I'm not going to say the full 10% of, of light beings of this side of the, the fence, okay, are more susceptible, if not are literally under getting black magic. Yep. Thrown out. Boom. Yep. 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 So are they targeting Merovingians? Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm getting here. So, and, so but the, it's not going to hold because I no. have the justice card. So let me explain this. Okay. So since a lot of us, not all 10% of us, a lot of us are of the Merovingian lineage does not mean we're actually related because it's been such a long time now that the DNA doesn't match, but we're coming from the same lineage of Merovingian. Yeah. Okay. So let's ask this. Are a lot of the twin flames Merovingian? Okay. And while, while she's pulling guys, so a lot of these truthers, these really good truthers with big time mystical abilities that now have handlers, it's Ace. because, yeah. So the twin flames are Merovingian. Well, that's, well, I, I'll shut up. Never mind. I'm not going to go into but it. They're not I'm related. Gonna... Okay. So like, just because uh, a divine feminine and divine masculine are both of Merovingian lineage does not mean that they're related. They're not of the same family they just come from a, the same dynasty yeah it's been it's been a long time guys the, 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 this is not like kissing cousins okay um that's that's what the other that's what the other side does um so yeah so okay so yeah that's what i kind of figured because there are a lot of really really good truthers out there that are very spiritually gifted and they've gotten themselves into some trouble because they were easily fooled but I'll say it this way too. When you're a good person, you see the best in other people too. You're not expecting somebody to be working black magic against you. Or someone with you. someone with high psychic abilities, um, oftentimes men or male or female tend to be empaths. And what do empaths often lack is boundaries. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes empaths automatically just want to bring you in and show you love and trust you because they see the good in everybody. The thing is, um, and this is, this is one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn is my boundaries with, with people. Um, and, um, and I, I found that out the hard way. Um, we tend to just trust people too quickly what, yeah. Would you say so, Bryce? Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. Instead of vetting them. And um, is this an important thing to understand that not everybody has your highest good um, in mind? Not saying they're evil necessarily. You could just claim have selfish people out there, right? The asshole. Just, yeah. There's a difference yeah. between an asshole and a witch. <laughs> like, there's, yeah. There's just some people are just um, assholes. But oftentimes we don't see those little subtle red 
flags. And those subtle red flags are really what you need to keep your eye out for. So, and I'm just talking on this side of the woods, you know, this, this neck of the woods where we're on a screen and everything. And like, I, I, I put out a video not too long ago, a couple days ago. I don't want to be asked to do videos with people in the comments. I'll disable my comments. And the reason being is there is a reason I choose the people I do videos. There's a reason I have vetted them. You know what I mean? So there is, there is only one person that I don't film with anymore that I actually, there are two people that I don't film with anymore that I would really love to film with again. And the only reason I'm not filming with them right now is because they're being controlled by a coven, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this, like, and this is what's sad is that we've <coughs> joked about this, Stephanie, is that the, the dark, the controllers, the dark ones, they know, they knew who we were. They knew about this stuff, they, but we didn't. And so we took them at their at face value that these were good people. And I didn't, the head of the coven that I'm dealing with, I didn't know this person was bad really until I started comparing text messages with people off camera. And we were seeing all these lies, these inconsistencies. Why is she lying? That's when I started. And then we started to figure out anyway, I'll stop there. Cause I don't want to say too much, but yeah. Oh, the tangled webs we weave when first we practice to deceive. All right. You ready for this ship to take a gnarly turn? Oh, it always does. I'm used to it by now. Bring it on. Bring it so on. Let's, let's start where we know we are. Merovingian means the bloodline of Magdalene, which is the bloodline of Atlantis, which is the O negative bloodline. Chalice means nectar of supreme excellence, which is also the Ankh, which comes from Jesus. We know that the real Magdalene and the real Yahshua were not Jewish. They were Egyptian. Okay. They were not Jewish guys. They were Egyptian. We know that Yahshua was not crucified. Yep. Cue the Bengal song. They lived a long life. They had five children, which ended up being the Merovingians who ruled during the, they were the, uh, a Gaul. They were in Gaul or France during the dark ages, tar, AKA tar, Tartaria, the golden Tartaria. age. <laughs> the tar <laughs> say tartar. Tartar, 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 which was the real golden age. Of, I think a tartar um, sauce. No. <laughs> I think our guides are like, oh, oy vey. Uh, so, so let's let's take another turn, okay? And there's a reason why I brought up the Nordic, okay? A few weeks ago, you guys heard me speak about the Cassiopeian Forum, where they were talking about the unicorn country. We'll just say the country that starts with a U, the unicorn country. I was like, unicorn. We can't say the name, but it starts with a U. You guys know what we're talking about, all right? They just surrendered to, we'll say, the land of the czars. All right, because we can't, we're coding here, guys. We know that in the capital of the unicorn country is a portal. And this is where something called the Kentucky. You're killing me, Smalls. Goddamn killing me. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting real good at tap dancing around all these names. Okay, so at the capital of the unicorn country, there is a portal where apparently the uh, reptiles, the Draco, brought in a group of humanoid off-worlders called Kentuckians. Don't, don't get, I'm not saying Kentucky guys. I'm saying Kentuckian. Do they have a derby? Maybe. <laughs> well, they had river dancing because they were Nordic. So what we call Nordic people were Kentuckian. Okay. The way I look, blonde haired, blue eyed, they were brought in during the time of Atlantis, right before the fall. Okay. Remember this, this were the Kel Celtic culture, the Druids, um, literally Q river dancing. That's what they, that's where we got it from was the redhead, you know, the, the real redhead, blonde hair, blue eye, which su not surprisingly. Now you could like, like Stephanie's also arch neg negative and she's dark hair, dark eyes there. You can be arch negative and have dark hair, dark eyes, but it's common. It's super, super common for an RH negative to look like me. Okay. Most generally speaking, most are just unique. <laughs> well, my friend, my friend who's black is also arch neck. She's O negative too, but she's black. So you can have people who are black or Asian and don't have the Nordic features, but they predominantly are in, I have like every side effect of being an RH negative. Like it's almost comical. I have like every side effect. Okay. So now let's talk about King Arthur and Camelot. Oh, now we're really digging into the gold. 
Yes. So what did King Arthur have to do with Magdalene and what actually was Camelot? Okay. So they tell us the story of Arthur got, Arthur got popular by a 12th century book over the history of the Kings of Britain. So this was allegedly written in 1136 by Geoffrey of Monmouth. It follows the line of rulers over 2000 years. So scholars tell us that King Arthur was fantasy. I beg to differ. All right. Now, Gre this this Jeffrey guy allegedly in the 12th century was actually copying from another book that was written in the fifth century, same times the Merovingians were ruling in Tartar in Tartaria. Okay, so um, now now all the historians will tell you, well, we don't have many resources from the Dark Ages because all of a sudden people couldn't read and write anymore. Bullshit! Bullshit! bullshit how do we go from being able to read and write in hieroglyphics highly educated we have the library of alexandria as they tell us and all of a sudden boom the next hundred years we can't read and write riddle me that batman we ain't that stupid no they're not giving you information because it was tartaria okay so we know that king arthur comes from tartaria now king arthur allegedly was from the magdalene line he was from the Magdalene line. Okay. Now, 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 now. People think King Arthur is an English king. But if we're looking at the Tartaria times, he was not English. Because the Anglo-Saxons hadn't come over to England yet. So he was Celtic, which is Kentuckian. We know. What did Mary Magdalene look like, Stephanie? Well, according to my divination. And the original pictures of her. Paintings okay, well, I didn't know that. I just divinated on it and asked, and that's what I was getting. Um, blue eyes and blonde hair. Yes. Her father was Greek. Her mother was Kentuckian. Celtic. All right. So that makes, I was like, bing, bing, bing. There we go. So they're telling you, they're telling you through King Arthur. Now, let me keep going. We have something called the Lancelot Grail. This was written in France. This has to do with King Arthur. This is where we get the Knights of the Round Table. And this Are you is getting also, excited there. Yes, because boom, 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 we're gonna get over to the American mm -hmm. continent where we actually have proof that Magdalene lived in America, not Europe. We got proof. Okay, America first. It ain't just a political slogan. All right, okay. so. This is where we, so in the Lancelot Grail, which was written in France to add addition to the story of King Arthur, why would the French be interested in adding to this English fantasy lineage? It was like fantasy football. Like we're going to have fantasy royals and the French are going to add some stuff to, it doesn't make shit's not adding up. It's not adding up. Okay. So tell us the legend of King Arthur by looking at the love between Lancelot and Guinevere and the quest for the Holy Grail which is the Merovingians, the bloodline of Atlantis. Okay. Mm, nice. Now it's all going boop. Ding, 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 ding. Knights of the Round Table, which we know that all these dark players have tried to manipulate the Knights of the Round Table. In this book, let's ask the card. Knights of the Round Table are these representatives of the 12 galactic tribes. Holy shit. We're just- I don't even have to pull my cards. I do it. Well, I will, but- I just got goosebumps, like, really, like, these goops, these goosebumps could be the size of freaking monkey POX. <laughs> I, I mean, there roll. was chimpanzee shit in the, <laughs> I mean, I read the ingredients, I was like, oh, people are literally infected <laughs> with chimpanzee shit, what do you expect? All right, anyway, but I yeah. I roll, okay, with the funnies. It's chip pity shit. Okay, so we're asking if the Knights of the Round Table was the 12 galactic tribes. Representatives of the 12 galactic tribes, which are the tribes of light, not the 12 tribes of Israel, which are the bloodline families of the controllers. Mm -hmm. Now they've tried to invert that, right? Because they, because again, darkness can't create anything. <laughs> Only the light can create shit. Darkness just takes it and inverts it. Not only did I get a yes, so I got a yes with the star card, because that's galactic, okay? But they inverted it. They inverted it. We see that's, you, devil. We the see devil, you. that's 
that's that's C A B A L, and that's secrets. So what did they do? They took this and they inverted. And it. they created Jacob <laughs> and his twelve sons. Okay, so this is what this is where things are going to get interesting because we know that Arthur is famous for what pulling a sword out of the stone. Oh, oh I know where you're going with this. Take it away. Okay. So is this something that happened or is this prophecy? I just thought it made your download. And is the sword in the stone having to do with re the recorrecting of history? What was this question again? Let's just ask, um, is this prophecy? Is the story of King Arthur prophecy or did it actually happen already? Because in my research, okay. I kept going, wait a minute, maybe this is the Merovingians. Maybe this is the Merovingians to come. Are they telling us Celtic because that was Magdalene's part of her heritage too? Her mom was Celt or her mom was Kent um, Kentuckian. Her dad was Greek. She looked like her mom. Oh, negatives are notorious for being blonde haired, blue eyed, red head, blue eyed, green eyed. Oh, negatives carry a lot of recessive traits. Potentially, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with um prophecy over it actually happened. And the reason being is I get the death and rebirth part. So this actually could, or, or actually, no, I'm kind of picking up on this. I feel like maybe it happened, but it has to be repeated again. Okay. So death and rebirth card along with the justice card. So with those two cards, um, and it's somebody, uh, one, we could make that one person that does this. That's, there's a prophetic, there's a prophecy behind one person being able to do this um okay can we just ask the cards is mr t arthur let's just ask it's just divination guys we could not we could be wrong because i actually had heard that before so can we say um is pulling this the sword out of the stone have to do with not necessarily a sword of stone because what are swords in um tarot Words and thoughts. So is this the retelling of the truth? Taking away the fake, the fake stuff and putting the truth out there. Because we're all doing in the process of doing that too. So it could be a collective pulling the stone out as pulling the sword out of the stone. Okay. The truth got so, stuck and held. So has something to do with timeline shifting. Two of pentacles. And it's taking what the dark ones did so this is higher font with the seven of swords so those who steal truth giving the truth to the people to go dark to light so basically this if, in my head this is how i'm seeing it the sword in the stone was the true history stuck in a rock that no one could see while well, they sold a lie and now i'm thinking collectively we're all pulling that stone out now it gets juicy. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Okay. That makes so, a lot of sense to me. You know how these different time periods have names? Like Atlantis, Tartaria, Gog, and Magog. Is Camelot. Is Camelot. Camelot. Sorry. <laughs> I got, <laughs> got to add my humor into it. What, what was the question? <laughs> is Camelot the name of the new earth that we're going into? Camelot. Camelot. From King Arthur, King Camelot. We, they talked about the Kennedys in Can Camelot. Is that going to be the name of the mm. name? You know, like Tartaria was a time period. It's not the name of the earth. The earth has a name, but there's time periods, right? So it yeah. lands this. Tartaria, Gog and Magog, Camelot, or the Great Reset. <laughs> Camelot, what we're going to call this new earth. This new time period coming in after the ascension into the positive timeline. <laughs> As I pull... We're going to go to, we're, Earth's going to turn into Venus, guys. Just, you know, <laughs> a little bit about you. Well, well. I have a lot of slogans I could say. Right now. I'm like, is Camelot the safe word? Is Camelot the safe word? 
None of my cards are saying yes. And I've pulled six already. What are they telling you? Um, is Camelot another name for Tartaria then? That's kind of what I was feeling when you said the question. Okay, I just pulled literally when I asked, is Camelot another name for Tartaria? I got the Ace of Cups. All right, well, there you go. Okay, all right. So I guess I will say this Camelot's information. Where's my other one? Dang it. Camelot's information, like the real truth on it, this is. This is this is communication or a love offering, right? Offering of technically the page of cups is offering of like emotions or something, but I'm going to go with communication in this case it was blocked. So we don't know the real history of it. Um, I think though. I feel like. Camelot in the Tartarian period was either the transition into Tartaria or the transition into Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog. Because, and I get this because we're going from so strength and the queen of pentacles. So there is a good power in place. And then there's movement into disappointment and fighting. Okay, so that makes sense because if you know the story of King Arthur, he was fighting against invaders. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so now this was where shit gets real. And Stephanie oh, and I have geez. talked about this a lot, okay? I don't know this for sure, but my spidey senses are telling me we've seen the map. I'll place a picture of the map in my editing process so you guys can see it of America. And that America is actually the real Egypt. Israel, Babylon, France, Gaul, all oh, the big Babylon. players. I'm in Egypt. Well, let's, let's, well, that's, so that's what I'm saying, guys. So I live in Georgia. There is a Cairo, Georgia, in South Georgia. We have an Athens, Georgia. We have a Rome, Georgia. Atlanta, Atlantis. We have, they're telling us. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. They're New telling, York. Yep. Um, we have a New Britain in Connecticut, which I live in. Re I grew up next to. There's, and then out west we have. There's Bethlehem's. We have a Bethlehem here too. <laughs> so um, they've yeah. used us even as to where these locations are. We know during the Great Reset between Tartarian Gog and Magog, they moved things around. They rewrote history books, all that kind of stuff. So. We have been playing with the idea from this map that where I live in Georgia, all across the southeast and of Florida was Egypt. Now, we know that the Merovingians had to be a cicada as their symbol, and cicadas are huge down here in Georgia. I know they're everywhere in the world, too, but that's, they are here in Georgia. Now, we've also asked the cards before, did Magdalene and Yahshua go up to Canada? Was that Gaul when they had to escape up into Canada from Egypt? Okay, we've asked before, we got in the cards that Magdalene was buried in Ottawa. The real tomb of Magdalene, the one in south of France is fake, guys. That's all fake. That skull there is of a Middle Eastern woman. We know she was not Middle Eastern. She was uh, blonde hair, blue eyed. Okay, the real, do you really think the controllers would let you see the real Magdalene skull? <laughs> If you think the controllers would let you see the real Magdalene skull, you, <laughs> you, you got another thing coming. Okay, the real tomb of Magdalene we've gotten is potentially in Ottawa under some government buildings. Now, I'm going to put a picture of this. I'll email you the picture, Stephanie. The Capitol building in Washington, D.C. is, we know, is a, a Tartaria building. Mm -hmm. Let's first verify that with the cards before we go any further. Capitol building. Is it a Tartaria Look building? At <laughs> huh? Look at it. <laughs> yeah. Guys, settlers coming to a new world, trying to survive in malaria, and they weren't building some ornate capital building. You know, you guys hear the fighter jets? Do you hear that? 
their fighter jets going over Atlanta. No, but we've had some weird um, air traffic here. The energy overall is very, very strange. Like, I'm under a very severe thunderstorm warning, which I get excited about. I love thunderstorms. Um, especially, it's hot and humid here. It's, like, well, it's not hot, it's super, super humid, so it's going to cool things off, which is nice. All right, let's let's figure this out. <laughs> So we're asking if the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. was a tart. I pull an ace of swords right away. I pull an ace of wands right away. And I also get the ten of cups, which tells me Tartaria, too, because Tartaria was a thousand years of peace. This is peace. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but again, manipulated, going into the next phase of Earth. Gog and Magog. So yeah. in the rotunda, of the <laughs> world, I'm going to put pictures up on the screen, guys. There is a sculpture of the, Az the Aztec calendar and a woman who is, seems to be, even though it's sculptured, she seems to be fair haired, fair eyed. She has a oh. crown on and she's bowing next to what appears to be the entrance to a tomb. Many people, not just myself, say that is Mary Magdalene. Can we verify that there is a sculpture of Mary Magdalene with a crown on her head in the rotunda at Capitol Hill from Tartaria in Washington, D.C. And I'm going to explain the tomb in a minute, guys, because it's not what you think it is. It's not the tomb of Yahshua. Yep, that's Mary Magdalene. The tomb, so they have to tell you the true story at some point, these controllers, as part of their, they have to tell you. The story of Yahshua, even though we know Mithra was crucified, we know that. Yahshua, the body of Yahshua was placed into the tomb. How many, tr for three days, right? How many trimesters in a pregnancy? The tomb is the controller's way of telling you the truth. That was his sperm inside of her womb. The tomb was the womb. Oh my God. How many mic drops do we gotta get in this? Okay, this is gonna be the icing on the cake of all these deep dives we've ever done, Bryce. Like, you're, you're even shocking me right now. I'm just like, who's Pump City over here? This is, this is Magdalene, this is all Magdalene. She guides me on this research. So let's, let's verify in the rotunda. We know that's Magdalene on the rotunda wearing, a, is she nailing before the Holy grail of the bloodline of Atlantis that came through her womb, the Ankh. Well, with these two cards, I would say yes. So the womb, the moon, which represents the womb, by the way, with the temperance card, which could be the Atlantean bloodline, um, and um, which is a very spiritual bloodline. And the Ankh also represents spirituality connected to man. That's mm -hmm. the other meaning of the Ankh. Again, stolen. Again, covered up. Again, they snuck out the truth. Because swords are words and thoughts. Truth. But they have it right there at the rotunda. From Tartaria, a sculpture of This Magdalene. is on the bottom, the hierophant. So let's verify, let's ask, let's just verify. Did Magdalene and Yahshua live in the continent that we know as America? And not in what we know as Egypt, Israel, and Europe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. Hold on. Flying cards. That's not a show without a flying card. <laughs> Getting my workout by uh, going after my flying cards. Okay. So number one, Magdalene, Yahshua, feminine, masculine. Okay. So these two together, together, family, celebration, 
However, with the use of spells, witchcraft, and lying, they made you think otherwise. Yeah. Temporarily, it's not going to hold. This information will come out. And it will come out because I have the King of Swords who is very truthful, honest, and holds integrity. Pulling the sword out of the stone. And something you wish for with the Nine of Cups. I love it when my tarot spreads make sense. <laughs> so we're going to go with the theory that Yashua and Magdalene were born and raised in the area that I live now and ended up traveling up to Canada, which was Gaul. That's the so for the French Canadians, you're the real French people. You're the OG French. Oh la la, it's gotta go. <laughs> I studied French for years. <laughs> That's all I know. Je ne sais pas. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, oui. I know something else, but it's really not appropriate. Oui, je avec moi. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you were going with that. I only learned that from that song. <laughs> I think it's more Creole, though. Creole French than a. Uh, I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. All I know is like, I took both Spanish and French and like French, like half the word you don't even say. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I learned more, in, uh, I learned more Spanish talking to actual people that speak Spanish than actually in my class. I almost failed Spanish. And then Hola, when I started no to habla speak, español, no habla I can count to a hundred in Spanish. I can say the days, well, some of the days of the, well, I, I've been forgetting, but days of the week, um, yeah, no habla espanol, muy poco, como estas, muy bueno, um, loco, el, loco en la cabeza. I'm Do I look like head. I speak Spanish? I can, I can say pantalones in fuego. <laughs> my pants are on fire. I look like I could probably speak French, but because, you know, I'm a white person, <laughs> but like, um, my mom speaks a little French. My dad speaks Spanish, but I know how to speak Sanskrit. That came real easy for me and some stray for some strange reason, but um, I speak English and light language. That's about it. I speak English, redneck and Sanskrit. <laughs> y'all, y'all, there are some gas stations. Bless your heart. <laughs> There's some gas stations in South Georgia that I have to go, excuse me, have them repeat again because I can't understand what they're saying um anyway we're just i love the french language though i absolutely think it's beautiful language i'm just kidding i just can't i just for some reason i was like um and i have a lot of french descent guys like i have a lot of technically french descent i don't know anymore where any anybody's from what a little french in me i've never had a little french in me actually i've had a little english i've had a little south african a lot of american <laughs> We're going to go back to that video again, are we? Never French, though. Never French. <laughs> so <laughs> You're like, I'm oh still God. young, though. I'm it's still like young. <laughs> hey, if we're living to 400, I'm just a spring chicken. So Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Okay. Anyway. Ace of Cups, baby. Ace of Cups. All right. Speaking of the Holy Grail now, womb. Okay. So, 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 so. I think that's it. So, basically, moral of the story, Merovingians are Magdalene's descents, descend, descendants, and Yahshua's, but they carry the blood. They're, they're recognizing Magdalene because of the Atlantean connection through the blood, the magical Atlantean blood. Um, they lived here in America. They ran up to Canada. It's in the Capitol building. You can see it on the rotunda. The tomb is the womb. Um, and basically, King Arthur was real. And we're going to be pulling that stone out of that, that, that sword out of that stone together. Um, <laughs> I was about to do this. And I was like, wait a minute. No, never mind. <laughs> um, maybe smear everything. Maybe the sword has to go into the stone. Maybe the stone is the womb and the sword is the outlet. I mean, the, 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 the plug in the outlet. Is it penetration? I don't know. I mean, we're learning that sex is, it really is all about the hokey pokey. I mean, like, <laughs> really, it's, that's what it's all about. Like, I mean, that's what those solar flashes are. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Levitation sucks everyone in and out. <laughs> I mean, who knew? Who knew? You know, all those people that own toy shops are super excited now. They're like, yes, my business is about to grow. <laughs> Well, guys, think about it. Why does the church tell you, don't do the hanky-panky? It's sinful. Yeah. Hello, wake up and smell the coffee. Because <laughs> the church is Luciferian, and they only yeah. want to do their sucky bus. They don't want us to have fun, guys. No. I was saying today, I, I recorded uh, next week's Sophia Code Day as well on the ISIS And I was saying, I was, like, listening to this other reader talk about some stuff, and she brought up, like, um, and I was like, oh my God, she has such a good point about, you know, we're, our, we're so like demented on how we're taught about sex now. And a lot of that comes from the churches and how she was talking about part of like that intimacy, that magnet is just like enjoying each other's bodies before even happens. And I was like, oh my God, she's right. She's so right. She said it way better than I did. Half of our audience is probably learning more about sex than they did in sex. Ed. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Me three. Yeah. Yeah. We're learning together. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Magdalene is just telling me that there is somebody who's watching right now who is also a truther, who is having some oh shit moments right now, some like um, gut punches right now. She wants to tell this person a message. Can you pull? Stephanie, it's a man. Oh. There's a man watching right now that's having an oh shit moment because he's having some realizations about some things. Maggie wants to speak to him. Maggie, Franklin, what do you have to tell us? Guys, I'm in a goofy mood. That's what happens when you wake up extra early after only sleeping for three hours and you got to drive two hours away. Oh yeah, it's been a day, but it was a fun day. I slept till 6.42 a.m. The sun was up. That's really that. late for you. Hell yeah. I was like, what is this? Am I a teenager again? Like, what's happening? Well, I already know what is aha. I, I know I know what's... When you asked... I already knew exactly the oh shit moment. Okay. So to this truther... And actually, I feel like this, hmm, I'm going to watch what I say here. So number one, what you were thinking is um, okay. I'm going to be very careful how I word this. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. To the truth are out there, you really need to understand your place in this. That was my first card. Okay. The male truth or Magdalene is telling me is watching right now. Who's having an oh shit moment. A gut punch. Yeah. What, what card was that? I also, it's a lover's card. I also feel like not only does this go to the one truther, but this is actually going to a couple in a way. They're not getting the gut punch, but this is a realization they also have to come to, to terms with. Okay. But yes, this goes to one person. Um, and you've been heavily, heavily, um, spell casted and, um, you're in a fight that you don't even probably realize, or you do realize, and you're too afraid maybe to admit to it. Um, and you're being blocked from something. But you have to understand, justice is coming. These two, everything's going to balance. Everything's going to balance. And you don't need to know how. You don't need to know how, but it will balance. And it's okay. Everything is going to be okay. And you have to understand, I know exactly, I know more than I'm saying in the cards. And that <clears throat> you are highly protected. And this goes for a few gentlemen out there. You are highly if you are a truther of the light, you are very, very protected. But to this one truther, do not fear. And that's I the message. Said that. She just said me for me to tell him not to be afraid. Well, you that's, fine. that's, that's, the, be um, yeah, that's the message I'm getting. And I, I got a little bit of that message from uh, Magdalene anyways. And my, she talks to me now too. I, like, I'm like sitting here like, 
she's she's really chatty with Bryce. And then one day, like, hit me around the dark outpost, and she came up. Like, I started hearing her too, and I'm like, okay, maybe Bryce isn't as crazy as I thought. I'm just joking. <laughs> she's very loquacious, and she's well, funny. The thing is, too, I, you know, I if you do ask for her help and her love, she really does show. And you guys got to understand, she's also part of the Christ. So yeah. it's not just Yahshua. Literally, she will come to you and she will show you love and she will literally whisper in your ear, I love you. She will. Yeah. I've heard it. And her, she's very strong, very strong personality. But at the same time, it's, so it's like Kali almost. It's like very, very strong, uh, like lovingly aggressive, but very nurturing. And she's beautiful. She's gorgeous. And she wants you to know, she's telling me, Yes, you are connected to her. If you're questioning that, you did have a past life with her. She will come to you if you need help. She's also telling me if you have been trying to reach out for help on phones, email, and you haven't gotten responses, you're being blocked by black magic. It's okay, though. You're safe. And yeah, you don't have to know how this is going to work itself out, but it is. Right? There's stuff behind the scenes that you can block this out if you want, but there's stuff behind the scenes. I do know there's help. There's people helping you behind the scenes. And yeah, stuff you know, I don't. So, <laughs> so. yeah, I do know. There's, there's, there's help. There's help. And, um, you're, he's got a whole team of help. A whole team. Whoever this is watching right now that needed to hear that, that's from Magdalene. We're all and family. it's going to be, it's going to be 100% okay. Like I, I come from having anxiety attacks and panic attacks and worrying about everything most of my life and throughout this whole entire thing. And even, you know, all this negative energy and all this spell casting upon certain targets. I have an inner peace in me because I know it's all going to work out. And the one thing I've learned, the only thing that the Christian community ever brought to me was that trust in creator. Now that's the real creator, of course, not the fake one that, they spell cast you to make you think you're serving the real creator. And I learned that through my own turmoil in my life. And that's the beauty about the mud, right? We talk about yeah. the lotus flower. That's the beauty about the mud is that through the mud, we learn who we are. We learn the truth of who we are, but we also learn the best to trust in creator when we're going through the mud. Mm -hmm. And then when you put the trust in creator and you put the trust in the angelics, we put the trust in your team because we all have a spiritual team that's rooting for us. We have a cheerleading squad right there by our side, mm -hmm. whether it be ancestors or spirit guides of any kind, whether that be angelics or, or ancestors or whatever it is, right? Yeah. When we put our trust in what we can't see sometimes, it makes the most beautiful flower because it really, it brings us to a place of, 100% inner peace, no matter what's going on. So to that person, please have peace that you are going to be just fine and that it's all going to work out. She's also saying, yes, you were lied to. Um, but there is forgiveness coming. So don't be afraid of the future. It's okay. And the reason why you were put in the middle of all this and the reason why you've experienced such heaviness with this is because you don't know who you are, but they do. You are very that, important to this. <clears throat> and that goes for a few, few people out there that we won't put names, obviously, but we, we do know. Yeah, some I'm not, stuff I don't know who exactly she's, I, I kind of maybe have an idea, but I don't know exactly who she's talking okay. to. I'm just saying there's a few the, people what she's yeah, there's talking a, to say. There's a few people and just, you know, don't just trust every single person just like that. You know, if you just met them, 
they need to earn your trust first. You know, so um, take a step back. This might be part of a little bit of an ego death. And a learning and space, some karmic, some karma being righted. Um, I also want to say too, this is something that if somebody is telling you something about a person, but your, your instincts are that that is not true, why don't you just ask that person instead of believing the lies? Also, if you have a friendship with someone or a relation, whatever it is, if, if that person, if there's something going on between you and another person and you have to, you need to have conversations. If somebody else wants to be involved in that conversation, or you feel the need to pull another person into that conversation, chances are you're being spellcasted to have a handler. Things should be worked well, that's, out. That's a control mechanism. Yeah. So. And I realized that I, when I was starting to uncover, when I was comparing text messages with another person, between us and this person that we now know is the head of the coven. Um, that's when I realized that she had to be involved in all these conversations. It was like, no conversation can happen without her there. And I was like, holy shit, this is a handler. This is what a handler does. So that's just a lesson. I mean, that's a lesson for everybody. Like if you need to talk to somebody about something, Unless it's a work situation, you have to have HR there, whatever. But if it's just between two people, like let it be between you and that person. You know, they're, they're, it's okay to have some private conversations with a person, especially if it's over intimate stuff. You know, it doesn't mean you're intimately involved with that person, but it could be over something that's private between the two of you. You don't need someone else there, right? So I, I just, we need to all, we all need to under reevaluate boundaries and reevaluate yeah. sovereignty as human spiritually. Yeah. We, we do know that, you know, some, not all, but some of these handlers are obsessed with checking the cell phones of people, their social media. They actually do post um, things on their social media and it's not really them. So if it's like, if you're on telegram and there's like some weird stuff that's being posted on someone's channel that goes kind of beyond the norm of what they normally would post, you know, just, Use your intuition on that because you might be onto something and we're not trying to get anybody paranoid or anything like that. It's just, just it's just start. more or less, this is going, this is actually more, this is more of a message toward certain people that have platforms that are very good, but maybe have trusted too quickly. And their information over, like their sign in information. And I mean, that's why I, I mean, I've been honest, like I get emails all the time that there's someone in Canada who has my old password constantly trying to break into my YouTube channel. The only other, there's only one other person that had that password and that person I gave that password to, I still, even though he fucked up, I still trust him. He would never do it. I, I trusted giving, I, he would never do anything. Would he? He'd never do anything to hurt me like that. He wouldn't do anything to hurt my channel. I trust that. But yeah. uh, I guess he gave that information over to one of the coven members yeah. that I warned him about. And now my channel gets attacked. I constantly am getting emails. I'm getting a message now. I normally don't get the messages. I'm getting the message now. And I'm not sure who it's from, but I'm getting it. I also want to put the message out there. And this goes for, um, this could be for truthers or for viewers um, alike. Okay. If you're physically in a location with a bunch of other truthers or other viewers with the truthers, you need to watch what you're eating and your water you're consuming. I was, um, I have been given messages from spirit realm that certain people, is it okay if I say this, Bryce? Go ahead. That some of that stuff was rigged. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. And I got hit because I know when I was looking into, when I started to look, cause I've never, Stephanie, I laugh all the time. Like we don't know how to do this. Shit. Like I've never casted spells. Like I don't know how to do. So I had to research a bunch of stuff. And do you guys know that there are love spells, which I find this to be the most disgusting form of spell casting, by the way. Um, again, pat on my back, never had to do that to get a man in my bed. Um, Stephanie hasn't either. So Anyway. I'm not as open about that stuff, but okay. 
just want to rub it in a little bit. I can go out there and get any men I want right now. I know that I won't, but I can do that. Um, women put their, uh, this is so gross guys. It's a, they put their period, cook it into food and do their little, whatever they do. Okay. I didn't know that one, but okay. Whoa. So you're that a, was that, that Miss Marina does? Marina? I don't think she had, I think she was a dude, but <laughs> I mean, oh, there's no. tons of different types of, of, of those spells I found. Well, there's tons of, I checked my, uh, I was on Reddit. I found all of these when I was reading all of these spells about communication, about them stopping severing communication for two people. I found all these like spells you can do in your fucking kitchen. That's what they're called kitchen witches. And I was like, holy shit, guys, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't mess with somebody else's free will. It's not going to turn out good for you. And why would you want to? Why would you yeah. want to? Why I would rather be alone for the rest of my life than be with a man who was with me because I casted a fucking spell. Well, I, you know, I'm just, I just, the reason I put that out there is I just want people to be just be careful if you're following somebody in person. It's one thing if it's on a screen. But if you're following somebody in person everywhere, okay, that there, it's literally, there's some organizations, they're not really organizations, it's just one person flocking the sheep that he has, <clears throat> or maybe there's multiple of them. Just be careful, it's not culty, like, it's not if, cultish. If something feels controlling, you shouldn't have to show your cell phone to anyone. This is just the stuff I've been getting messages from um, our creator because I feel like there's some people safety out there that might be, I don't want to say jeopardy, but this I'm is treading very, very carefully on this. This is a and war it, and some people don't know who they are. Yeah. And unfortunately, we really can't go into many, many details. We try to put out comms to some degree so that you guys are understanding. And we're trying to be integral about it and be on the side of light about it. And I know it pisses some people off. Um, but sometimes if it, if it pisses you off, the message is probably not for you. Yeah. Okay. It's not for everybody. You know, what we're putting out there. I mean, the fun stuff, that's for everyone to enjoy and have the entertainment of, but Literally, we, we try to pass messages to certain people out there throughout these videos sometimes because it's important because we're being guided to. So I wanted to point that out because I, I read your comments and a lot of, and I read my comments, of course, and I, and I noticed that there's a lot of people that are like having a hissy fit because we can't go into detail. We can't, we can't because there's something called defamation of character. And there's something called life and death. There's something called this is a war. I, well, almost, I think we're protected enough where we're I almost, okay. I mean, I almost lost my life one night for sure. Almost lost my life one night. Yeah. But I'm saying like. Even, even if we were to minus that there's a legality mm -hmm. too. And there's a code, there's a code, code of conduct that we're born with knowing right from wrong. Right. So we just have to be very, very integral about how we go about it. So if, if you're like, well, what the hell? Not for you. Not for you. And okay. if you don't understand that and you're demanding a name for your protection, if you're not being attacked right now, they're not just randomly casting spells on people, guys. They're, this is strategic. The, the Lucifer is militant. He's militant. It's strategic. There are str this group that's attacked, targeted me, has done it in every life. I now know that because I was shown it. There's a reason why they're targeting me. It's not because they're jealous. Yeah, they're or targeting certain people that are part of certain well, yeah. yeah. So we'll leave it there. Um, they don't go around just attacking anybody. Plus, the humans are done. They don't want to attack people. They're tired. And so <clears throat> no fear, just love. You know, yeah, we're that, yourself. We're putting stuff out so you guys have a bit uh, an understanding and also for other people to know we know. 
Um, this is a war. Again, this is a war. And so if you, you have to ask yourself if you're dying for a name because you think you're, no, you probably just want the gossip. You don't need a name from us. You have something called a gut intuition. We all have it. Why are you asking us for a name when you can ask God? You just want a lot gossip. of people have guessed correctly, by the way. So, I mean, we've put enough comes out there, I think at this point. So we're, we won't go into any more, but victory. So, you know, it's all going to work out in the end. I have an inner peace. I'm cool. I'm good. You know, I'm just trying to spread my love yeah. and, um, work on myself. And, um, I know Bryce and I are doing a lot of work to, you know, make sure we're bringing in the best version of ourselves into this new world. You guys should do the same. And, um, we love you guys. We want yeah. to hear this, but we, but Stephanie and I are not like the holders of any secret truths. We're literally researching and then following the, 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 the rabbit trail and listening to our guides and listening. Yeah. And so we present this with you guys because you are our brothers and sisters. And I know it has happens to be one of Bryce's many, many of one of many Bryce's guides. And Yashua happens to be one of the many of, guides that I have. I have my grandparents and um, my grandmother is around and, and pretty loquacious like M Magdalene is. Oh my gosh. She's like, yeah, she was like that in real life too. Stephanie, did you make sure you did this? Did you do that? Stephanie, 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 what's wrong? What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's wrong. Yeah. She's the same way right now too. And so, and, and grandpa is, is there with me all the time too. And so you know, it, it, once you, once you tap into that spiritual realm, you start to realize who your guides are because you can feel their energy. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things is I felt like, Oh, feels like grandma's in the room with me. Or I would smell like toast. Well, grandpa made toast every morning. No toast was being made. That's grandpa. Um, I had uh, a reading with Tamara and grandpa came through and did your ear ever get itchy ever? I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, recently. Yeah. Oh, that's grandpa grandpa because he would do that in real life yeah they're around yeah. us you got guides too guys and just talk to them yeah yeah y you you we're don't... just listening to our guides guys yeah. so you know it's and you just have to be open to it and just ask them to come through whoever your guides are and you know just because we listen we hear our guides and you're not doesn't mean we're any better it just you know um we're all activating at different times and there's no comparison of anybody. We're all in this together. Right, Bryce? Yeah. There's no one that's more superior than the other. This is yeah. I mean, about the Merovingians. As we just talked about, they, even though they were the line of Magdalene and they ruled, they saw themselves as being no different than the people, which is very different from our rulers today. So, um, so guys, yeah, we, we love you all very, very much. I am going to have to disable the comments for a while due to the abuse coming from the church and because of all this business where people, you know, accuse us of being bad people because we're not just dropping names. Okay. So that's going to have to be, my, my comments are going to have to be disabled for a while until we get through this. Um, hopefully those that are the ones causing the problems will have a little uh, moment of reflection over um, the, the severity of this. And when all of this is done, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to write a book about this because it's been wild, the shit that I've been through. So um once it's all done, I'll be more than happy. I'll, shit, I might even have to testify at their trial. I don't know. So, um, so I'm, if I do, I'm gonna make sure I look real cute to go testify. <laughs> um, a little dress and little your dress. makeup done. And, you know, and, and we know I've, I've been told, we know that the head of the coven is real pissed that we're not afraid that I keep laughing about it. I heard she's real pissed that I called her death spells, cute, cute little death spells. Good. Keep getting mad. Yeah. I mean, in the end, in the end, mother, father, creator wins. And, yeah. and we know that. And so, you know, everything's going to be okay. And like I said, I, I have such a major piece about it. I don't just, you know, day by day, take one step at a time. And, you know, what do you say, Bryce, all the time? We're just walking each other home. Yep. So Except let's do for it. the ones doing black magic, they can fuck off the other way. <laughs> so, well, um, I don't think they have a choice at this point. They made their bed. Now they can lie in it. So, lie in anyways. It. 
All right. All right, guys, we love you. Please join us over on Aquarius Rising Africa at 10 a.m. this morning. Stephanie will be with us where we are going to be discussing this topic. I cannot wait to hear what uh, Shanti and Mornay have to add to the information as well. So, all right, we love you guys, and we will talk to you all soon. Bye, Bye. everyone.